I understand that conversations about what constitutes a flop and what doesn't is a sensitive subject for some in 2023. And I also understand that second week box office decline is an all too familiar trend in modern entertainment. But The Flash might actually be a bigger disaster than even I could have predicted. Let's discuss. I watch so you don't have to. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. So reports are indicating that DC's The Flash almost completely disappeared in its second week of release, suffering an almost unheard of 72% drop with a $15.2 million weekend. I saw another article suggesting a 73% drop, and to put things into context for you, that number eclipses every other DCEU movie released so far. In addition to that, the 73% drop puts The Flash behind only Morbius as the highest box office drop for any comic book movie that's debuted at number one. So putting it in the simplest terms, Flash is breaking all the wrong records, and I think it's safe to say that it is a financial disaster. But the funniest part about all of this has been the apologists on social media trying to make excuses for why this happened. Most of them are dumbfounded as to why general audiences aren't obsessing over this movie in the same way that they do. What an idiot! Oh, what a loser! According to some, The Flash gives you everything you could ever want from a cinematic experience. In fact, these people are out in full force making excuses for this film, acting as if they are on the Warner Brothers payroll. <laughs> I'd buy that for a dollar. I've seen people suggesting that this film will receive a second life on streaming when it's released. And apparently, suddenly, all these people are going to realize that this is actually a good film. But what will actually happen is quite the opposite. All the people who clearly decided not to watch this movie in theaters will now get to see how garbage it is firsthand. Are we really going to pretend that people didn't rip No Way Home apart when it came out on streaming? The ability to watch something repeatedly and pause and rewind, that does not help a flawed film in any way. And make no mistake about it, The Flash is a flawed film. That makes sense. I've heard people suggesting that everyone is being too hard on the bad CGI, and it really isn't as bad as everyone is making it out to be. Weird because the Flash visual effects artist, Zach Mulligan said, recently about working on the VFX, if it looks like it was made in a week, it probably was. Damn! Once again, when the people involved, the people actually making the CGI is telling you it's bad, then maybe stop making excuses for it. All of this criticism is not the result of people just hating on the film for no reason. This is people with a brain and with standards describing what they are seeing on screen, and guess what? It's not good. Believe it or not, some things just aren't up for debate. I've seen people suggest that The Flash flopped because some people, apparently general audiences, don't even know what DC is. Saying that a lot of people think Superman and Batman are Marvel characters, and that Marvel is a stronger brand, a household name, and DC is not. This person also proclaimed that this is one of the things that James Gunn will have to fix. While I will not argue that the MCU is very obviously a bigger brand when it comes to movies, to suggest that no one knows what DC is, and that no one understands that Batman and Superman are not a part of the Marvel Universe, to me, that is one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. Just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber, you go and do something like this. This is what happens when people's only knowledge of these characters comes from the MCU. Here's a thought, maybe pick up a comic book, or better yet, look at the financial success of movies like Batman 89, the Dark Knight trilogy, and yes, even the Batman. All of which were standalone stories with absolutely no connection to a bigger universe. I guess those theaters were filled with people confused as to why there was no Spider-Man cameo in those Batman movies. Nobody likes a smartass, alright? I swear people just say things sometimes to hear themselves talk. Try using your brain and thinking before you speak, just once in a while. And by the way, this excuse was used also, low-key, as a way of freeing James Gunn of any kind of blame. When I watch a superhero movie with dick jokes, 
and with a scene where babies are raining from the sky along with a CGI dog, no one can convince me that James Gunn didn't have something to do with that. It's an older code, sir, but it checks out. This movie did not flop because no one knows who Flash is and no one knows what DC is. The Flash had a CW show that ran for 10 seasons. He has been in countless animated movies as well as TV series, not to mention he's existed in comic books since 1940. But sure, nobody knows who he is, right? Sure, Jan. I think the MCU did more damage to people's intelligence than I originally thought. I've seen people bringing up the positive response that The Flash got at CinemaCon, and they're confused about how general audiences apparently don't feel the same. Did we ever stop to think that a majority of the people who were at CinemaCon and got the opportunity to watch this movie early were handpicked? They were there for a reason? It's all a strategy to get brain-dead zombies to buy a ticket, and apparently it worked on some people. Again, social media is not real life, and people in the real world could care less about your Twitter overreactions. Not impressed. I also found it funny that this week, Kevin Smith revealed that WB was begging Christian Bale to return to the role of Batman in The Flash. Apparently he was going to be the Bruce Wayne in the scene that was later given to George Clooney. But Christian Bale, being the talent that he is, refused to do so, and I think I know a couple of reasons why. Uh, why? For one, he already said many times that he will not return to the role of Batman without Christopher Nolan being involved. So clearly he's a loyal person, so he wouldn't really fit in with what WB is trying to build over there. What it also tells me is that Bale probably saw the writing on the wall very early on with this movie. And I think he wanted to protect his character. Something that I wish Michael Keaton would have done as well. Now you wanna get nuts? Come on, let's get nuts. Honestly, I think Christian Bale learned a lot during his experience with dipshit Takawatiti on the set of Love and Thunder. Biggest lesson being, don't get involved with studio-driven films. Stick to movies that have the benefit of a singular creative vision, and your work on that project will probably be much more fulfilling. And if there's one thing that The Flash is not, it is not the result of a singular vision. So good on Christian Bale for recognizing that, so his character didn't suffer a similar fate that Michael Keaton and Ben Affleck's did. Amen. I say again, when all signs are pointing to this movie being a disaster from the start, maybe it's a good idea to stop trying to make excuses for it. Truthfully, this movie was set up to fail from the beginning, and in my eyes it was never going to be looked at as one of the greatest comic book movies of all time, regardless of what people on Twitter were saying. It may give some people exactly what they're looking for, big set pieces, nostalgia, CGI cameos, but what it didn't do is give general audiences a reason to actually care enough to go watch it. I don't care! Once again, a well-written, cohesive story is where a movie should start. If you start the process by saying this is going to be a multiverse movie and we're going to have a bunch of Batman in it, which I feel like was basically the pitch for the Flash movie. In that circumstance, then most likely that movie is going to fail. I am genuinely impressed that some modern audiences did not fall for the same shit that they would typically fall for. Y'all be cool. Right on.